Welcome to the Open Forum. Once again, we have a privilege and a pleasure of looking together for a little while into the Word of God. And my, my, how wonderful it is that we have these opportunities. And so tonight, as you ask your question, we'll look at the verse that you, or verses that you are concerned with, and we will see if we can uh, find truth about them. And so, shall we take our first call tonight, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, Mr. Camping. Yes. I'm calling just uh, for a question. I might have misunderstood what you said a few weeks ago when someone had called asking about uh, the 2011 uh, date uh, that uh, you said was um, uh, calculated on the on biblical um, on the on the Bible uh, when they asked you. Uh, are you certain of the? Will that certainly happen? And I believe you said it definitely will. It's God's word, unless He changes His mind. Well, excuse me. Did you me. say that? No, well, no, I did not say it. I said, uh, someone asked me, "Can God change His mind?" And I indicated, "Yes, God has the." Uh, uh, has the legal right to do that. He, uh, we read that in the Bible. If the whole world would cry out for mercy, like in the days of Jonah, the city, the whole city, sat in sack, sackcloth and ashes when God had told them they were going to be destroyed in 40 days, and, and God uh, did cha change his mind. He did not destroy them because the whole city repented. But in the days of Noah, for example, uh, nobody repented. We, there was only eight people that, that believed that the flood waters were going to come and who actually uh, to, went into the ark. And the Bible assures us in uh, Matthew 24 that it, it will be like the days of Noah in our day that except for a small remnant, people will not listen. They will, uh, they will not uh, uh, believe that it's going to happen for certain. And uh, so it's, it's like the days of Noah. And we can rest assured, therefore, that God will not change his mind. It is going to happen. Everything in the Bible fits into that conclusion. All right, and thank you. And I have just one other quick question. Uh, if someone uh, has children that may be going to college, let's say, in, uh, two, in 2014, and uh, they've been putting money away monthly for their tuition, according to your calculations, that would be somewhat foolish to do that. Is that correct? Well, if they were my children, I would never want to do it. But, you know, I'm very careful not to tell anybody what they are to do. This yes, is a very private matter between each individual and God. It's not for me uh, to, uh, to tell them what they are to do. But I'll tell you, I can, if it were my family, if it were my children, we wouldn't have any money for college because we know there is not going to be time for college. But thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, uh, Brother Camping, the reason I'm calling, something disturbs me very greatly about you, and I've been struggling with it and trying to say no, no, no. But I believe within my heart the Holy Spirit is telling me that I have to call once and for all. Something troubles me very much. A week ago, a poor soul called you on the telephone, and she was begging and pleading with you and crying out to you to pray for her beloved friend who was dying. And you said to her, and I remember exactly what you said, 
you said that this is not the kind of show that we can pray for anyone. And you also said, why can't you pray for her? Well, and you well know, excuse me, excuse after, me, excuse me. No, <laughs> you, you, you have to remember this. Uh, anybody uh, uh, can change the character of this program. We do have programs at some of our stations, which where we call prayer time, where people can call in and share prayer requests. But if we would do that on this program, and every out there, there are many, many people that have uh, situations that are terribly grievous, and and they would they would really want to have a lot of people praying for them. But that is, this is not the character of this program. If we would begin to do that, then we would, we would lose the meaning of this program. And, uh, and so it may sound a little harsh when I, but I, 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 I normally do say there, there will be others who, since you've called, there will be others who will be praying for you, I'm sure. But I, 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 I'm sorry. I, 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 I don't know how to handle it any other way. I don't know how to handle it. But I know that if I says, oh, yes, we'll ask everybody to pray for you, I'll guarantee to you uh, that uh, next program we'll have three people calling, and in the next program we'll have uh, half a dozen people calling, and we will lose the program altogether. I'm sorry. We just have to follow the rules but thank you and i appreciate your concern and it isn't that i want to be hard-nosed or, or or harsh at all it's only that we have a task to do uh, and a very important task and uh, we and it isn't like we don't have other opportunities but thank you for calling and sharing, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hey, Brother Camping. Yes. Uh, Revelation chapter 16, verse 18. Revelation chapter 16, verse 18. We read there. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake, and so great. Now, what is your question? Could you compare that to Exodus 19, uh, verse 16, and verse 19? Exodus 19, verse 16 and 19 there we read and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of a trumpet exceeding loud Israel incidentally in this context is uh, near is right adjacent to Mount Sinai and God is getting ready to talk with them uh, they're going to hear his voice directly and it's also at this time God is going to give them the ten commandments and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that were in the camp trembled and Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the nether part that is the lower part of the mount and then in verse 19 and when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by a voice. This was a very, very striking situation where God was speaking directly to all of Israel. They were so frightened, they finally said to Moses, Please, please, uh, let God talk to you and you tell us but we can't stand to hear directly from God. And that's what uh, followed after that. From that time on, Moses went up into the mountain and, and Mount Sinai, and God gave him all, all the laws that he was to write into the, as part of the Bible. And, 
And but now, what is your uh, uh, question? Uh, right, I wanted to know if um, if there's enough evidence in Scripture that the Lord is going to command uh, the bodies to come out of their graves with an audible voice, and should we even be concerned about that? And I'll take my answer off. Well, Thank you. we have no we uh, we God doesn't require an audible voice at all. And we don't have to be concerned with that. We do. We do read. We do read in uh, First uh, Thessalonians chapter four, where it talks about the rapture. Let me turn to that. In First Thessalonians chapter four, we read um, for in verse sixteen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, not the archangel, the chief messenger, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, Christ does not expand that information at all, and we don't have to pay any, we don't have to think about it, because God did not give us any more information. We just leave it alone. Please hang up and try again. Thank you for calling and sharing, and shall we take our next call? Please welcome to Open Forum. Hello. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm a first-time caller, long-time listener. And uh, I, I uh, don't agree with everything you say, but some things I do agree but one time I was reading the Bible, and I don't have the Bible with me, about Noah, which you was talking about uh, um, the the seven days when when he had to go in the ark. Well, I was reading the Bible, and then I was I was figuring that um, when he said forty days and forty nights, he he was talking about um, uh, twenty four hour days. But when he was saying um, the seven days and that date uh, that he was talking about, it seemed like um, he he was talking about 24-hour days, but also it could be applied with that the the thousand years is a day and the day is a thousand years. And so when I was reading further into it, I um, noticed that um, it said that... um, be between the the time he, they entered the ark to the time the ark um, went to dry land, it was 150 days. And then so um, I I was thinking about that, and I said, well, how long is 150 days? And and I came up with um, little over a little over five months, and that is that almost agrees with. It says in in Revelation about the five months. Yeah. Well, so, no. Excuse me. Excuse me. No, you you can't. Whenever we're working with the numbers of the Bible, ne- nothing is approximate. We can't say 150 days is, uh, but you can do it another way. The uh, hu- the 150 days according to the calendar Noah was following, there were 30 days in a month. Uh, 360 days in the calendar year, and so 150 days was five months. Not because it looked like it was approximately 153 days, but because according to the calendar that Noah used, it was five months, and and it did identify with the five years, the five months uh, that were according to our calendar. 153 days in our day. Now, uh, the the uh, it was at the end of 150 days that the ark uh, s- uh, struck land, and uh, and the waters continued to abate after that. That meant the ark wasn't floating anymore. Uh, the people on the ark were already uh, had been safe and secure while the ark was floating on the waters and the water was destroying everything. And that 150 days, therefore, uh, is uh, the same as the 153 days that the true believers are with Christ in heaven. 
while this horrible, horrible day of judgment is going on here on this earth. Just like Noah during that 150 days was in the safety of the ark. And so you were very close, but it wasn't because it was approximately, but according to the language of the Bible, we can say it was, it was, it fit altogether, uh, uh, perfectly. But thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Uh, the lady uh, complaining about your handling of prayer requests. Um, she was desperately trying to communicate with you, but although uh, she had been potted down, she could still be heard. You could still hear her voice trying to communicate with you. Now, I realize that this is a teaching program, but uh, the name Open Forum implies that there will be interaction, normal interaction between you and the callers. If you or your engineers, or maybe it's done automatically, but if, if you are to continue potting people down, don't you think you should rename your program to reflect more what it really is? Well, excuse me. Uh, we can call it any. We can give it another name. Uh, we call it the open forum, and and then explain constantly, constantly. This is a teaching program where we are uh, interested in teaching uh, uh, principles uh, from the Word of God. And we, uh, we could put all of that into a, a name. Of course we can. Now, you know, uh, there are those, of course, who wish this program was not on the air or they are trying to uh, to cut it down in any way they can. And so, uh, of course... Because we allow anybody to call, we don't monitor the call. There are many programs where uh, if, uh, if a caller calls, they, they are first asked before they're allowed to give, be given airtime, what are you going to talk about? And so they can keep the program uh, front and center uh, by, by pre-talking uh, uh, talking ahead of time to those who are to call. We uh, try to be as open as possible. It's wide open, even those who hate the program, who wish it wasn't on the air, who hate the subject matter, who wish that we would never, never talk about the end of the world. And uh, they're angry, uh, and yet they're able to call in and express themselves. And I think we're going way past the second mile in allowing this to be an open forum, even though we can never, never, never please those who disagree with what we find in the Bible. But thank you for calling and sharing, and uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, Mr. Camping? Yes. Yeah, uh, I have a question. A few weeks ago I was listening, and uh, you said that uh, man is not totally depraved. Man is not totally depraved, as I had been taught, and what is taught in the Reformed uh, churches, that uh, uh, a man is totally depraved and incapable of any good, and that is not true. That, ha that uh, uh, for example, Balaam was a wicked soothsayer, and yet some of the f finest prophecies uh, recorded in the Bible are, are, came from his mouth. Ahab was the uh, the most wicked king of Israel, and yet he he uh, sat and, uh, he uh, humbled himself, uh, and God uh, recognized it and 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 postponed a a punishment that he was planning to give uh, put on Ahab, and uh, we we have these evidences that in totally in men who have no a possibility of salvation, yet they're capable of doing some things good. And uh, uh, that's why that's why they're able to enjoy life here in the measure that we obey God. Even though we're not a child of God, we will have 
blessing because the laws of God are designed to give blessing. Well, Mr. Camping, uh, Balaam, a uh, guy came to him in a dream and told him not to curse Israel. And uh, Ahab, Elijah, who Ahab definitely knew, had a very close relationship with God, um, was speaking to Ahab through God. So both these instances, they were obeying God. If you would read... Uh, Excuse me. They were neither one. There's any evidence that they were a child of God. The 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 uh, uh, the uh, uh, creed which says total depravity, and I'm thoroughly familiar with that, uh, stipulates that mankind is so wicked that he is incapable of any good and that is not true that is not true the blessings that Balaam were bringing uh, he was a he was a wicked soothsayer he was a uh, there's no evidence in fact he was killed uh, just a little bit later uh, along with all the others that were in rebellion against God and uh, yet his blessings were wonderful uh, as you read them. And uh, and Ahab, the Bible goes out of its way to declare that he was the most wicked king uh, 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 that, ever, that ever ruled over Israel to that day. And uh, so we, you can try to make an argument for the Reformed position, but it won't wash. It won't wash with the whole Bible. It they were in error on that. And we shouldn't be afraid. You know, those people, those men like John Calvin and so on, we don't stand in awe of them. They, they were men just like we are. They tried their best to understand the Bible, but they didn't have near the Bible helps that we have. They, uh, they, didn't, uh, uh, they didn't have the advantage of the... Of the uh, uh, information that Dan Daniel wrote and it was sealed. They didn't know anything about that. And so, uh, of course, we, we should be expected to know more clearly what the Bible is teaching than they. They were not supermen. They were just uh, people trying their best to... And uh, uh, John Calvin, for example, was a very fine writer, uh, uh, he could write very well, and some of these other men could. And uh, they were, they really became the kingpin of the churches, and, and that itself was a wrong thing, because the Bible should never, never, never have uh, allowed anything, uh, anybody to take a place above the Bible. But thank you for calling and sharing, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, Mr. Camper. Can you read Mark 8, verses 15 through 18? Mark 8. 15 through 18. All right, let's look at that. Mark 8, 15 through 18. And a, um, Verse 14, let's begin with verse 14. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread, neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. They were crossing the Sea of Galilee with Jesus, and he charged them, saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisee, and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have no bread. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto him, why reason ye? Because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not? And having ears, hear ye not? And do ye not remember when I broke the five loaves among five thousand? How many baskets full of fra fragments took ye up? They said twelve, and so on. Now, what is your question? Well, I've, I've learned from you that the whole Bible is a parable. And here it seems like he's telling us, the Christians, how to look at, um, you know, parables. And so when the disciples looked at living as a physical bread, he rebuked them. 
So this is to me saying that we should never, ever, ever, ever look at a verse in a physical, literal sense, because um, Jesus accused the disciples of having eyes, seeing not, having ears, and hearing not, and um, those are characteristics of the unsaved people who are not able to perceive the spiritual meaning. You know, having eyes, seeing not, having ears, hear not, heart and heart. So basically, isn't this telling us that we should never, ever, ever look at a verse in a physical, literal sense, but we look at every single verse in the Bible in a spiritual Well, sense? no, that, the Bible doesn't teach that. We can look at the verse in a physical, literal sense. We certainly don't want to deny that Christ was crossing the, the Sea of Galilee with the with the disciples and that this conversation was going on which was a literal conversation we have to acknowledge the uh, the literal thing that happened uh, uh, when uh, when Israel crossed the red sea for example that was very literal we have to look at that but in order to discover the teaching of that we have to there, uh, there may be a morality that might flow from it. That that can be helpful, but we don't haven't really struck pay dirt. We haven't really come to the the final meaning until we see the spiritual meaning of that passage. And so we we uh, we. Uh, 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 but that doesn't mean, in addition, there cannot be some uh, that there's a morality that might that we might learn from that. But we ultimately, unless we have found the spiritual meaning, we haven't really uh, uh, understood the real reason why God put that passage in the Bible. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Brother Campy, how are you? Very well, thank you. Yes, Luke twelve, fifty one to fifty three. Luke twelve, fifty one. Let's look at that. Luke twelve. Fifty one to fifty three. Verse fifty one. There we read. Uh, uh, hold on, will you? We're going to pause for a message, then I'll be right back with you. We're asked to look at Luke chapter 12, beginning with verse 51. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you no, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Now, what is your question? In verse 52, the word five, could this mean the atonement which emphasizes both salvation and judgment? No, in, this, in this context, uh, there's no ever... Uh, it, 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 yeah, I, I wouldn't dare put that spiritual application. It's... Uh, in, uh, to put a spiritual application, it has to fit the, the verse. Now, in, from henceforth there shall be five, uh, and uh, and uh, 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 can we substitute in there will be the atonement in that house? Well, yes, maybe you could. Maybe you could. Uh, that's possible. Uh, you, you may have a valid thought there, uh, because the fact that the atonement has come there, that... Uh, one or two members of the family have become saved. Therefore, they are uh, they, the house is divided. The, the, uh, uh, the true believers over against those who remain under the authority of Satan. I believe that is a, I believe that is a valid thought. Just more, brother Campy. Uh, in verse 52, the word house is in this, uh, with the concordance. It's the same contents as Luke 19, verse 9, which is. The chaos, Jesus says, this day is salvation come to this house. Could that be valid? Uh, I, I, that's, that is possible also. It is, uh, it is possible, or, uh, although I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not um, familiar enough with the word house in the Greek language, if, if how many different ways it is 
uh, in the Greek and how it's used, and, and I would not be able to give an opinion unless I, I did a lot of homework on that word. But thank you for calling and sharing, and shall we take our... And thank you for this, uh, this thought about the five. I think that's probably valid. But thank you, and shall we take our next call? Please welcome to Open Forum. Yes, hi. I have two questions I would like to ask you. And they're very interesting questions. Uh, first of all, is a Jew and a Gentile, or maybe even another race, like a black person or a white person, are they allowed to get married, according to the Bible? Is a Jew and a Gentile allowed to get married? Or, or another race, like maybe a black person or a white person. Are they already married? No, they're not. Or, or another... There's nothing in the Bible that I'm aware of that the, uh, in the Old Testament uh, God told the Jews that they were not to marry other nations because that was used as a portrait or a picture of the fact that we're not to be unequally yoked. And God uh, utilized the nation of Israel in the Old Testament as an example or as a portrait of true believers and the nations as those who are not true believers. And so, in order to carry that portrait out uh, to its spiritual meaning, uh, they were not to marry other nations. And, and uh, more than that, uh, there was a, a physical reason for it, a, a spiritual reason for it, in that as they married other nations, it also brought a lot of wrong... Uh, wrong uh, 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 religion into the Jewish nation. They they did quite a lot of marrying of other nations. When we search the Bible carefully, we, we see this. But now, in our day, there is no command I'm aware of anywhere in the Bible that, that restricts marriage between uh, any uh, uh, two inhabitants of the, of the, of the world. Now, did you have another question? Yeah, how was a black person formed if they were created by Adam and Eve, you know, down, down the line? Well, we, the Bible doesn't talk about that. Uh, we do know that until the Tower of Babel, which, which probably occurred about uh, 5,000 years ago, uh, uh, we, we can't know precisely, but God... Uh, scattered the nations by by changing their uh, uh, la uh, their languages it, it, uh, it, there was always there was a, one, just one language by the whole human race and then he broke them up by by causing uh, some people to uh, speak other languages and uh, and he also broke up the huge continent that uh, there was one continent at one time and probably about the same time he divided uh, the world up into the continents that we have today. Now, those who uh, ended up in the, near the equator, like Africa and Indonesia and so on, uh, became dark-skinned. Uh, we The Bible doesn't describe how the skin pigment changed in uh, but we do know that uh, that uh, in the, near the equator, the sun is f much hotter there than uh, farther north. And the farther north you went, the the lighter the skin, and uh, the closer to the equator, the darker the skin. And so that may have been just a, a product of the fact of, of helping people to live under that heavier sunshine. But uh, uh, we don't even know, we don't get that from the Bible. That is simply a, an, a, an idea that that uh, might have some bearing. Okay, can but, I ask you one quick question? One other quick question: If you have a husband and wife that um, that have a very good relationship, let's say the wife dies and she does go to heaven, and the husband remarries another. Uh, I'm wife. sorry. What is your question? Okay, a husband and a wife. The wife dies, and she does go to heaven. The man remarries another woman, and they both die, and they both go to heaven. So all three of them are in heaven. 
How do they in reject? heaven, the Bible says we neither marry nor are given in marriage. Whatever our relationship here has nothing to do with how we will relate together in heaven. In heaven, we are all uh, the bride of Christ. We're all sons of God. There are figures that God uses uh, to indicate our um, the intimacy we have with Christ. And uh, and uh, but. Uh, Insofar as what happened here on earth, uh, as God used the the means of marriage and the procreation, the bringing of children, to multiply the human race, and that will not happen in the new heaven and the new earth. Uh, we will. There's no evidence of any kind that there will be uh, families that that are developing in the new heaven and the new earth. But thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello, um, Mr. Campy. Yes. Yes. Um, I've been listening to your show. Um, a, a lot of the things you say I agree with in reference to, you know, uh, people being careful about the churches and what have you. Um, but I have a question about May 21st, 2000. And eleven, um, it's it's been troubling me that you keep saying that date because um, I have a friend that's uh, from Jersey, and my friend's been listening to your show as well, and it's been telling me for years um, they've had a bad experience. They were following a teacher who uh, a Bible teacher who's basically been telling them that in the year 1986 the world's going to end, and they left that. Um, that Bible teacher because in 1986 the world did not end. And um, I also know someone else who has been studying uh, end time prophecies and has told me also that it's been a history of people who have been saying that the world's going to end and giving it a day and it did not end. And a lot of people ended up backsliding and leaving the Lord Jesus Christ because the, these Bible teachers have been saying, well, the world's going to end on this day, the world's going to end on that day. And they, they got prepared and it never happened, and I'm wondering if that's the, gonna, the same thing is going to happen to you. Because well, excuse me, excuse me. No, it. The Bible very definitely teaches that until our day, nobody could know the time of Christ's return. The Bible, if we study the Bible carefully, it insists that nobody can know, and that's why everyone that has ever made a prediction was always wrong, always wrong. But the Bible also insists that in our day, uh, the true believers, the heart of the true believers, will know time and judgment. And God has given a whole lot more information uh, uh, that has been hidden. God has not revealed it. It's all been in the Bible, but no, no Bible scholars were guided by God to learn how to uh, to find that in the Bible until our day. And God has given us magnificent proofs. And please, uh, if you uh, don't trust me, trust the Bible. And uh, But I have written out in, uh, 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 in black and white <laughs> uh, how I have found this in the Bible. And... Uh, and uh, you can you can get copies of these books like we're almost there and to God be the glory and I hope God will save me those three books uh, they're just uh, 70 pages in each one approximately and they will help you immensely to find the information in the Bible to please don't trust me it's not a prediction I'm making it is something that the Bible is declaring. And not only have we gotten the information, developed the information from the Bible, but then, lo and behold, particularly in this last couple of years, God has given us magnificent proofs uh, that, uh, that our homework had been done accurately, that God had guided us accurately in working out the timeline of history. And uh, uh, please... Uh, uh, please uh, uh, get that information. It's available free of charge. Just calling or writing Family Radio. I'm 
have another question. I'll, I'll read the book, but I have another question. On uh, May 21st, 2011, um, a lot of people might be disappointed to find out that this might be another date that was predicted or was thought of, of coming from the Bible, but it never happened, and a lot of people might backslide or might meet the Lord Jesus Christ because of this. Excuse me, it's going to happen. This is not like the other predictions. This is not a prediction. This is what God is declaring. Uh, when we get the next day after the uh, rapture of May 21, it will be the people left will be in the day of judgment. And they will know they're in the day of judgment. They will have seen all of the true believers raptured and they will be they'll see death everywhere it'll be a horror story here this is not a prediction that this is going to happen this is what god is saying and and please uh, uh, you you can uh, find this in the bible we'll guide you uh, to show you where the, how we rece- how we obtain that and why we can say it with so with such great Certainty. If I were teaching it that it's possible it could not happen, I would be a liar. I would be a false witness. I would not be uh, engaging in the task God has assigned me to be a faithful teacher of the Word of God. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Oh, hello, Mr. Captain. Uh, sir, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with you 100%. It is going to happen. You are not a false prophet. You are for real. You have the Lord God and King Jesus standing with you. The Bible cannot go back on its word. Everything that you have said from the Bible is going to happen. Don't wreck your brains and try to prove this to the world. Time will tell, sir. You are the king of the Bible teaching world. Thank you, sir. Thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Um, hello, Mr. Camping. Yes. Um, I just wanted to uh, to encourage you to to keep on the point of teaching uh, in reference to the people that have been calling to to ask uh, for people to pray for their problems. And you know, we all have compassion for those people, but it's really is not the the uh, place for that in, in that but also as the people are saying it people at home if they want to they can pray for the people but it's not uh, the kind of show that that someone could just keep calling calling up and want to be more or less have their ears tickled uh you know as uh, as Paul said um you you have an important message to get out and you have to utilize that time getting it out and it's you don't mean to uh, these people, they you know, some people feel insulted or hurt, or they think it's personal that you hung up on them. We know that's not true. I just want to encourage you to keep up your message. Thank, uh, you. thank you for calling and for sharing that. And uh, shall we go to our next caller, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, Mr. Kepping. How are you? Very well, thank you. Uh, okay, I need you to explain. Um, now we know that it is impossible for God to contradict Himself. But could you please explain uh, John fourteen nine and John one eighteen? John fourteen nine. Let's look at that. John fourteen verse nine. There we read. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long with you? Uh, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip. He that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? And then John one eighteen. John one eighteen. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. Do you see my problem? Well, now you see, we we 
uh, you have to remember we have to take into account everything in the Bible. When yeah. Noah, for when Moses, for example, he talked to God face to face, and yet he did not see God in His glory. When God uh, was going to show Moses Him in His glory as He really is, He hid Moses in a cleft in the rock and like in a little cave. Uh, and then he passed by, and Moses saw just the edge of the glory of God. He didn't see God. He saw just the edge of his glory, and uh, and his face shone so bright that when he came off the mountain, the uh, the his fellow Israelites couldn't even look at him. He had to cover his face with a veil. And so, you know, God... I, I, appeared uh, he for example we we uh, uh, god came uh, uh, to abraham uh, looking like a a kingly priest melchizedek uh, but it uh, it was it was not god in his glory he took on the appearance of a priest king christ took on a human nature he was god he never ceased to be god but he emptied himself of all of his glory. He emptied himself he, uh, in order that he could be with mankind. And so uh, when we talk about seeing God, we, uh, we yes, a lot of people saw God. But uh, uh, when they looked at the Lord Jesus, and Jesus even said, in John 14, if you have seen me, you've seen the Father, because I and the Father are one. And that's a big mystery also, because God reveals himself as God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And yet here he's saying, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And uh, that ties in with a, Col a verse in Colossians, uh, where it says that in Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, we can't begin to understand all of this. We, can't, we have no idea how to understand it. We just say, oh, yes, thank you, Lord, for teaching us that, and then leave it alone right there, because we're talking about uh, his infinite majesty who is eternal in every sense of the word and, and who can speak and bring uh, this whole creation into existence and and how can our little mind, uh, how can our tiny little mind understand such a, such a great, great God? And okay, we, one, we don't want to try to do it. Okay, I have one other question, please. I've been trying to explain to my friend that um, uh, women are not, to, are not supposed to be deacons. Am I, if that's right. Well, the Bible says, uh, first of all, in, uh, in um, of, of course, nowadays, uh, this is a moot question because uh, we don't want anybody to be in the churches. Satan rules there. But, uh, but during the time when, when, uh, uh, when the churches were being used of God, for, and that was for a period of 1900 and 55 years, then at that time, God said that a woman is not to uh, speak in the congregation at all, and in Second Timothy, we were uh, told there that the woman is not a teacher, have authority over men, and uh, so they have no place as, as uh, rulers in the congregation as having the spiritual oversight. Now, there was a place for uh, women servants in the congregation uh, they were the word deacon is the word servant and and so they were called a deaconess but they did not have a ruling position they were uh, whether they helped with the poor or helped with the sick or uh, we just don't know what their task was but they did have an official position in the church but that's all done now Ever since 1988, uh, we, uh, we we're not to focus on the church at all. We're to come out of it because Satan rules there, and God's judgment is on it. Okay, that's that's the women you're talking about in Romans 16, because that's what she was 
saying is that, you know, that she was using Romans chapter 16 as right, um, right, right. a reason for women to be okay to be deacons in the church. Well, Romans, uh, uh, she's talking about the idea of a woman being a servant, but not in a ru in deacons as we have them in the uh, in the churches have a spiritual oversight in the congregation as we as the churches have used them, uh, and uh, but in the Bible, uh, the uh, uh, deaconess was someone who served as a servant in helping in this area or that area they could not have had the spiritual oversight but thank you for calling and sharing and shall we take our next call please welcome to open forum hello mr yes. Campion. yes um I, first i guess i'd like to make a little bit of a comment about your answer to the previous caller I think it's really very insulting to women for you to be citing such such uh, passages in the Bible that women are not supposed to speak. When you go to a church these days, probably 90% of the congregation are women. Excuse so, me, excuse me. Now, now you have better be, be very careful what you're saying because... We're just talking about what the Bible declares. Is it God insulting women? Let me ask you. Let me ask you. A woman, uh, suppose you wanted to bear a child. You're a man. Are you being insulted because you can't bear a child? No. I mean, after you... all, now wait a minute, now wait a minute. We have equal rights, don't we? Why shouldn't I, as a man, be able to bear children? Why did God create us this way, that only women can bear children? After all, that's a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful blessing, a wonderful a privilege. And, and, and he, is God insulting us that we men cannot, cannot bear children? Well, the fact is, you see, God has given rules, and the rule is that the women bear children. And that's a wonderful, a magnificent blessing that no man can experience. But by the same token, the man has, uh, the, uh, has some other, other positions that the woman can't have. And that's not insulting the woman. It's simply that God has divided the, uh, has set up rules so that the world would, would operate correctly. But, but mankind, tries to take the law into their own hands and they say, oh, we have to have equal rights. A woman has a right to have every, do everything that a man does. Well, but they don't carry it through because then they have to, or they have to figure out how the man is going to have equal rights and be able to bear children. Uh, this, this, uh, this uh, the, what we call equal rights is based on man's philosophy not upon God's action, and God knew what was best. We can't say that the world is a lot better for all of the laws that man have con men have concocted that are contrary to the law of the Bible. Uh, it's uh, actually, uh, uh, it, of course, has worked very detrimentally for the world. But thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello. Hello. Yes, welcome. Yes, my name is John Rindon. Uh I wanted you to show me in the Bible where it says that the age of the church is over. What evidence do you have that the Bible says that? Where in the Bible that the age of the church is over? Yep. Well, it is found in a number of places. Uh, uh, for example, in my Matthew 24... Uh, God uses the whole chapter to talk about this present period we're living in, a period of great tribulation. And we know when we study that very carefully, it's a 23-year period that is just before the day of judgment. And right in the heart of that, of that Matthew 24, he says in verse 15, When you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place. Now, when we look at that language, how the abomination of desolation, that has to do with Satan 
uh, ruling, and the holy place is where the Bible is, and uh, that would be the churches. And so when Satan is ruling, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Judea, again, is a is a word that God is using to represent the churches, and the mountains represent Christ. And we are to get out. We are to flee to the mountains. That's one verse. Now, until uh, of course, it's based on an understanding that Christ spoke in parables. And without a parable he, parable, he did not speak. Unless we have that starting point, we will never find this kind of truth. We have to pause for a message. No one would know that the church age was going to come to an end if God had not opened up the book that he the that had been written by as God gave information to Daniel in uh, Daniel chapter 12 and then told Daniel to seal the book uh, and in that book God gave a lot of information for our day including the fact that the church age would also come to an end and that Satan would rule there and it was only after that book was opened and we know when we study the Bible carefully it was opened at the at the on the, right at the end of the church age and at the beginning of the great tribulation period and so we were well into the great tribulation period before we really understood that yes the church age has come to an end and I still remember c coming to that time when I knew I had to start teaching that the church age has come to an end and we have to get out of the churches. And, oh, my, I didn't want to teach that. I did not want to teach that uh, because I had been part of the church all my life and I have all kinds of family and, uh, and friends and so on in the churches and I knew it would, it would be a, make me sound like a... Uh, like I'm betraying the churches and so on. It was a horrible idea. And yet I knew I had to teach it because I learned that from the Bible. And, and I had, so I began to teach it. And my, my, my. And that really caused the fur to fly insofar as people hating me like they have never hated anyone before. But I'm sorry, we have to follow the Bible, and the Bible gives us plenty of information that indeed the church age has come to an end, and, and uh, this happened already 21 years ago. And if we look at the churches today, uh, candidly, honestly, and compare the average church today with what it was uh, uh, 21 years ago, there is a vast uh, difference in what is going on in the church world. It's because uh, the rules of the Bible are not applied nearly as stringently or faithfully as they were up until that time. But uh, uh, it is this time when God is dividing the wheat from the tares. But thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Yes, Mr. Campin? Yes. Yes, uh, I want to make two remarks. The first remark, I think, absolutely you're right, and it's getting rarer and rarer that people are defending God's rights versus that of the rights of man that stem from the French Revolution and from Satan. That, uh, you know, women are trying to be equal to men, like Lucifer was trying to be equal to God, and uh, they don't look at the examples of the famous women and mothers of the past, good Christian mothers and women, and the Blessed Mother and, and the saints of the past. They want to be the new woman of today. So I applaud you for defending uh, that kind of sacred tradition. But this is, I want to say my second message is... This what is, is your, excuse me, what is your question? My question is that I want to say that people who object to us expressing our opinions, this is a public forum, there are people who express their opinions and they don't agree with you about the second coming or about e uh, hell not being eternal. But I excuse think it's the right. me, excuse me. The purpose of this program, let me reiterate it again, is not to air opinions. Everyone has an opinion. The purpose of this program is to teach. 
And if we would use this program to air opinions, we would never, never have time to bring truth. But we're living in a day when God is, uh, when we're learning the, uh, uh, in a way that we've never learned before, the enormous importance of the Bible and all that it teaches. And so we use each program to teach as much as we can. And therefore, we just, just do not have time on this program to air opinions. That, that, uh, that would destroy the program. We wouldn't have time to teach. But I'm sorry. And thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Brother Kenting? Yes. Yes, I have a question for you, please. Yes. Um, it says uh, in Daniel 11 or 12, um, it says when a daily sacrifice is abolished, there'll be like 1,290 days. Um, brother, what does that mean? Well, that verse in Daniel 12 where it, or Dan, Daniel 12 where it's talking about a 1,290 days, it's referring, it is a, that, uh, it is referring to the period of time from one picture of the Great Tribulation till the next picture of the Great Tribulation till the Great Tribulation did occur. Now, the Great Tribulation is, the, is this period of 23 years or 8,400 days that began in 1988 at the end of the church age when God is bringing judgment upon the churches and at the same time, he is using that time to, to, to separate the wheat from the tares. He's, he's set up testing program after testing program uh, so that the true believers would be separated from those who look like true believers. And this was first typified by the fact that, that uh, Jacob had to leave the land, the promised land, that typified the kingdom of God and come to Egypt at the time there was this uh, tremendous uh, famine in all the land of that day and, and he had to come to Egypt in order to be saved from the famine and he came in the year 1877 B.C. and we know that very, very accurately from the, because the Bible gives us the, that kind of information and then, not 1,260, uh, not 1,290 days, but 1,290 years. And, and God gives us permission to look at a day as a year uh, by other examples that he gives. And when we go 1,290 years lead, later, we find there was another tremendous illustration of this final great tribulation, and that was from the year 609 B.C. until 539 B.C., a 70-year period. And the key uh, year was, uh, was uh, five... No, I'm speaking from memory now. I, I hope I get it right. Uh, the, the key year was 587 B.C. I think I have that right. Uh, when when uh, Jerusalem was destroyed... And, uh, and the temple was destroyed by, by uh, the Babylonians. And, and that was typifying this great tribulation. And then uh, two times 1,290 years after 587 B.C., we come to 1994 B.C. And that is right in the heart of this, this final 23-year, uh, 8,400-day, this 8,400-day Great Tribulation, at which time uh, the, uh, the, uh, the churches now have been, sil have been under the authority of Satan for, for 2,300 days, beginning in, in 1988. And, uh, and then God begins a further a further time of harvesting, of spiritual harvesting, but not in the churches. It, in other words, Satan continues to rule in the churches, so it's like uh, God is all finished for sure with them, even as he allowed uh, 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 Babylon to destroy the temple in the year 587 
B.C. And uh, all of this is tied in to that 1290 days. Now, when it talks about the daily, uh, that would be the daily sacrifice, or, or it's really talking about the end of the true gospel going on uh, because Satan is ruling. Oh, well, thank you, Brother Kemper. Thank you for calling and sharing. And uh, shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, I'd like to compare uh, a verse in Zechariah with a verse in Revelation. <coughs> a, a verse in Zechariah? Yeah, Zechariah 6, verses 2 through 8. Zechariah 6. Zechariah 6. Verse 2 to 8. Let's look at that. In the first chariot, there were red horses, and the second chariot, black horses. Let's start with verse 1. And I turned and lifted up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains, and the mountains were mountains of brass. In the first chariot, red horses, and in the second chariot, black horses. And in the third a chariot, white horses, and the fourth chariot, grizzled and bay horses. Then I answered and said unto the angel that talked with me, What are these, my lord? And the angel answered and said unto them, These are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing before the Lord of all the earth. The black horses which are therein go forth into the north country, the white go forth after them, and the grizzled go forth toward the south country. The bay went forth and sought to go, that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. Then cried he upon me, and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these are that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. Now, what, is, what did you want to compare that with, Revelation? Yeah, Revelation 6 and verses 2 through 8, there's a, a very similar sort yeah, of... Yeah, there it talks about uh, the white horse and the red horse and the, and the black horse and the, and the uh, green horse. Uh, I, I, I have looked at the, both these passages fairly carefully, and, and, and I don't see any... Uh, direct connection. There may be uh, something I haven't seen. In fact, at this point in time, I do not feel at all qualified uh, to give an opinion on what uh, or uh, suggest what Zechariah chapter 6 is really talking about. It, uh, Ezekiel 4522, please. Ezekiel 4522. There we read Ezekiel forty five twenty two where we read and upon that day shall the prince prepare for himself and for all the people of the land a bull for a sin offering and and this is talking about in the first month in the fourteenth day of the month ye shall have the Passover. A, a feast of seven days uh, of unleavened bread, and upon that day shall the prince prepare for himself and for all the people of land a bull for a sin offering, and that and that that is a referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the offering, the sin offering that that uh, was offered on the day of of the Passover. This, um, I, I reread Ezekiel and I found it perplexing because there's this talk about the prince and he's offering sacrifices, but they're doing it well, in the but temple. You, but you see, the prince is also the high priest. Remember, Melchizedek was a was a type of Christ, and he was a high priest as well as a king. And Christ never ceased to be king. He is he is the prince that offered the sacrifice. He was the high priest that offered the sacrifice. Okay, and you know what's interesting is in that temple there's no um, book of the, of the Law of the Covenant. In the temple the, um, the Messiah is seated and the mercy seat is not present, but if you read about the new temple in Revelation, 
it talks about the Ark of God being present. So that I also found very confusing. Well, I, I the, uh, uh, the uh, this is all to be understood spiritually, and and I have not done uh, uh, a whole lot of homework in this, and I don't really feel qualified. I I can look at a specific verse and maybe help, but uh, I I really. Uh, 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 I, I really don't feel qualified to make a comment. Okay, it does uh, have a lot of puzzles in it. Thank, thank you, you, thank you for calling and sharing. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Welcome, Welcome to Open Forum. Hello. Yes. Hi. Can you go to Zechariah fourteen, verse five? Zechariah chapter fourteen, verse nine. No, five. Verse 5, Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 5, where we read, And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like he fled from before the earthquake in the days of Isaiah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall, Jehovah my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And uh, you're, of course, asking, is this the, also... Is that, yeah, is that also related to um, Amos 1? It's, it's possibly is. It possibly is. It, uh, it certainly is tied into Isaiah and uh, uh, as Amos chapter 1 is, and I, I, I think it, it, it uh, probably is related. Okay, thank you. Thank you for okay. calling and okay. sharing, and shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Uh, hello, Harold. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, can you explain to me what the uh, latter rain is, and uh, are we in that period right now? And I'll take my answer off. Well, the latter rain comes from a verse in the book of Joel. In in the book of Joel, it's it's really talking about the the uh, final again uh, gathering, and it's a huge in gathering compared with what has ever happened before in the history of the world that began in the last part of the Great Tribulation, the final 6,100 days. And, uh, and uh, that is called, in the book of Joel, it's called the latter rain. I think it's in Joel. Let me see. In, um, mm, yes, in, in Joel chapter... Chapter 2, we read in verse 23, Be glad ye then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in Jehovah your God, for he hath, he or he will give you the former rain, not moderately, it should be righteously, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain as the first, uh, or after the first. And and uh, the former rain is is the sending forth of the gospel throughout the church age, and the latter rain is that that huge in gathering that will be take that is taking place right today during the final sixty one hundred days of the great tribulation period. Just and it ends with with uh, uh, the rapture and the day of judgment. And so we're in that period right now. We're right near the end of that period. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. Uh, my question is, what are you going to tell all the people when the day that you are saying passed, if nothing happens, what are you going to tell all the listeners that are listening oh, I, to you with I, big faith? Oh, what are you going to tell them when nothing happens? Well, if you don't think it's going to happen, that's your privilege. But I'll tell you, those who do not believe it may not happen, they will be experiencing the day of judgment on the next day because it, is, it be also begins on May 21. And uh, But what we're learning from the Bible is so absolute it is so certain that I would be a, a total hypocrite a total liar if I was saying 
that maybe it might not happen. The fact is it will happen. I'm absolutely, absolutely certain of it. It is going to happen. Well, well, I, I hope that people are not going to be discouraged when this happens, when nothing happens on that day, and they leave the Lord and stop reading the Bible. You, if you want, if you want to take a chance with them, go ahead. I can, I can guarantee to you, you will be entering the day of judgment. I believe in the Lord. I have, I have my life, you know, trusting Him, you know, and I just. Uh, follow the Bible, and I hope that all the people that are listening, you know, they they don't get discouraged when this, you know, they come and nothing happens. Well, Thank you know, the Have Bible, you might read First Thessalonians 5 again, and there it says that Christ will come as a thief in the night, that is, the, for those who, uh, who believe, and he uh, defines that for those who believe that all is well with them, they have peace and safety, and then sudden destruction will come upon them. Now, they believe that Christ is... We can't know the day or the hour or the time, even though uh, God has given us now that information. And so for them, Christ will come as a thief in the night because they are still in spiritual nighttime, and they will be entering the day of judgment. So you're, the position that you are in is a very, very serious position. Please read First Thessalonians 5, the first uh, seven verses, very carefully. But shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Mr. Compton. Yes. Um... I really don't understand how the FCC shouldn't ask you for a mental evaluation. Someone needs to go through your medical history because, Mr. Campin, you know the Bible, but you are preaching wrong doctrine. You are, you are, you are building people to believe that the world is going to end to leave the churches, which is all false. Mr. Well, excuse me, excuse me. Now you may you may conclude that that's your privilege, but if you if you're going to tell me that, you better show me from the Bible. Show me from the Bible, because the Bible is the authority. I'm not the authority. I have no authority at all. I just have to faithfully teach what I learn from the Bible and what. And there are thousands of people who have been checking me out and studying. And, and in fact, from time to time, they call me just like we had callers on this open forum that I will come up with a with a, something they've learned and share it. And I and I thank them for it because I learn from our listeners. I'm not a, I'm not a, 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 a teacher all alone. Uh, we have all kinds of people who are who are. I, I, uh, seeing the same thing and even calling and helping some of the most profound things that I have that I talk about I've learned from listeners as they call but thank you for but it's my but but uh, what I I what I do is whenever someone has an idea I check it out real carefully to see if it will if it agrees with the Bible, and if it does, uh, then I'm very grateful for it. If it doesn't, then I just, the next time it comes up, I say, no, nope, no, 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 that won't fit. That won't work in the Bible. But shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Good evening, Mr. Camping. just wanted to say thank you so much for this program and for the privilege that the Lord has given people like me to be able to um, both pray for those other callers who call in and also to give um, from what the Lord has given us to bring the gospel to the rest of the world and what a great time it is to live in order to see this latter rain happening. At the same time, I have to um, want to encourage other believers who may be in churches that they know that they do need to make a stand for what is the truth that the Scripture is re 
telling us now. Um, I had well, to. Now, excuse me. What is your question now? My what, question what, is about. What is when, your question? When Jesus was a baby and was um, incarnate, it, was he one hundred percent God, omniscient, omnipresent? He and was always 100% God. Uh, 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 but there's a lot about God that we do not understand, and so we don't get into those questions. But we know that He, uh, he never ceased to be God, although He emptied Himself of His glory. And just what that involved, we are, we, God doesn't detail either. And so we don't want to enter into the, that kind of of uh, questioning or that kind of uh, uh, of uh, argumentation. But thank you for calling. And shall we take our next call, please? Welcome to Open Forum. Hi, Brother Camping. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good, good. Um, I just had a question as to why. Uh, I mean, you're very adamant about your May 21st timeline. Um, and there's just so many other scriptures. There's several other than First Thessalonians 5, 2 through 7, whatever it is. Uh, there's some in Revelation, uh, several different places um, where Jesus is saying, I'll come as a thief in the night, you know, be prepared. Uh, and there's other scriptures that also say, no man knows the time of the hour. Um, well, you know, I, I, I just don't understand why you're as adamant about the timeline because because I think you tell. because God has uh, I believe the Bible God has said in Ecclesiastes or in uh, in uh, uh, <laughs> oh boy uh, has said in uh, in uh, I'll turn to it in just just a minute he has said. In I, I think I said it right, but I, uh, yeah, Ecclesiastes. <laughs> he has said in Ecclesiastes chapter eight, verse five, and let me read it. Now this came from the mouth of God. This is not my words. Verse five: Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing. Now, that, that's the setting. It's talking about Judgment Day coming. And those who keep the commandments are the true believers. And a wise man's heart will know. That's the word discerneth. It would be better translated, will know both time and a judgment. And that's, uh, that is a commitment God made, so we have to follow it. But now we've come to the end of our time. Until our next open forum. May the Lord richly bless you.